We're back. This is Arts Alive. I'm Linda Philippi. We're speaking with Mark Peterson and Steve Long. They're here to talk about the event coming up on October 10th at Linfield, Finding Your Audience. So welcome back, gentlemen. Thank you. Okay, and, and if you want to just maybe go through the, uh, the dates and times again. Sure. So it's October 10th. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a Thursday evening, 7 to 9, mm -hmm. and there'll be six of us. Okay, great. Yeah. You, do you want to go ahead and list all of the artists? Sure. Okay. Uh, I'm Steve Long, Mark Peterson. Uh, Lisa Olin Harris will be there, terrific mm -hmm. writer. Uh, Ellie Let's, Gunn. Can we talk a little bit about her? Well, we'll come back to that. Sure. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah, let me, I'll run through this. Um, Ellie Gunn will be there. Uh, Richard Sheverton. Um, Frank Lisiandro. And I don't want to leave anybody out. That's I think six. That's everybody. That's it. Yeah, we got there. <laughs> We're counting down. Okay, yeah. perfect. So, so, do you want to talk about Lisa then? Yeah. Well, I just I'm really fascinated by her work. She, she's an eth ethnographer. She was and an she ethnographer, was in, right? In the Middle East and uh, Syria. In Syria. Yeah. 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 So her her work. We uh, we traded books. We met at, at an event and we traded books, and uh, I was able to get to hers right away, and I was just so pleasantly surprised. Uh, how well written it is, how human it is. Uh, it, it was a delight. Her, her use of language is so poetic that, you know, if somebody's looking for that kind of a book, I'd sure recommend it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's obviously it's nonfiction. It is. So it's, yeah. it's talking about what's going on there, presumably. You know, it was several things. It's the culture. Mm -hmm. It's how she and her, uh, at the time, uh, well, gosh, I guess they were just fellow students. Uh, a fellow that eventually became her husband, and then when they did marry and had children, they were still there. Mm -hmm. And it's just how they coped and adapted and processed that culture. That's going to be fun to meet her. Yeah, yeah. she's great. 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 And she's back, obviously, she's back now. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. In fact, I believe she teaches at uh, George Fox. Okay, I great. Think. Okay, yeah. perfect. Yeah. And then, so we shall we uh, dive into Mark to what you're doing because since you're the the, the newest, I am the newbie. Yeah, yeah. The newest yeah. of the writers. I'll tell you, it's it's been a wild ride, and it's been really fun to be able to talk to Steve about the process of all the steps he's gone through, mm -hmm. and trying to it's like a maze, mm -hmm. and trying to figure we through that. And there's, you know, six or seven choices at every step of of different ways that you can go, and. Uh, Finally, I, I got down to the point where I really wanted to have more local control of what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And I managed to get a grant to pay for the printing of the book. So oh, that great. was really a blessing. And, uh, and I found Gail Watson, and you know Gail. Gail, she, she's usually here on the camera, but she's off for the summer. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, she's but, a fabulous woman. Oh, I just love Gail. And she's she great. has a printing press in her basement. Mm -hmm. And she can publish books out of her basement. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's really... It's kind of like, I feel like a farmer's market kind of guy, you know, mm -hmm. I have this book that I've published and my friend has printed and we'll go right directly to people and sell them and then all the proceeds from my book are going to go into uh, the, our community compassion funds so that will help folks in the community. So, mm -hmm. You know, yeah. just as a sidebar to that, I mean, when, when they talk about the unemployment rate and things like that and how, you know, the people who've sort of dropped out of the workforce because there aren't jobs available, yeah. but I think there's, there are a lot of people like Gail who've said, well, what, what else can I do? Yeah. You know, and so they found ways to be creative using sure. the knowledge that they have and whatever resources they have to put together something for them and, and really create a rather nice life, yeah. you know? Oh, yeah. Well, and taking a huge risk. I mean, it's a huge of piece of machinery she had to purchase. Of course. That's but, right. yeah. you, know, you, you know, you kind of have to take that leap yeah. of faith, as it were, yeah. you know? Yeah. Well, it's kind of fascinating because yeah. Steve, has, with his book, has kind of... Uh, I think shot the middle ground. He's trying to do mm -hmm. every both at the same time. It's right. going to be fascinating to see how that turns out because you actually have a national distributor right. and they're sending it out to bookstores. So it'll just be fascinating to see how that works for you. Yeah, you know. Yeah. I think when you do it that way too, it's you know you have a, a really nice cover. I mean that blue really kind of draws you. But I think it's kind of like wine. They say you know a lot of people buy the wine by the label. Yeah. Sure. You yeah. really, you don't know what's inside a book. So when you do it like that, if you don't have a big name, if you're not Stephen King or right. something, to, to, to judge the book by its cover, you have to have a pretty snappy cover. Yeah. You know? In this process, <clears throat> we originally had a different cover. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was uh, d done by a local artist with D. Boyles. Mm -hmm. Wonderful cover. And if, if the, the concept was actually my idea. It's what I always envisioned. And uh, as much as we all liked it, it seemed not as commercial, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, uh, along the way, I hired a PR firm, 
And he had some real words of wisdom. He said, people make a mistake in trying to tell the story with the cover. He said, the story tells the story. Uh, the cover just makes you pick the book up. Right. And that's what uh, you're saying. Uh, it's, it's kind of like the difference between marketing and sales. Marketing is kind of the, what sucks you in and makes you want it. Sure. And then sales is what drives the behavior that makes you want to buy it. Yeah. You know, so yeah. yeah. So well, it's fascinating trying to figure out what your format's going to be. Oh, well, uh, my, my heavens, yes, I of mean, course. And I didn't, I was totally in the dark, and I was walking through Powell's one day, and I thought, I'm going to go up to the religion section. I don't usually go there, but I just decided <laughs> to do that. And there was this little square book called The Soul of the World, and I went, oh my gosh. That's such a cool title. It, yeah. I know, and it's, yeah. it was such a perfect format. And I went, man, and I just ripped it off. We just totally covered it. You mean it. with the, the, the size of your book and the, the way size, you're doing it? Yeah. The picture, where the pictures are. I mean, yeah. it's just, You know, and it's kind of interesting because having seen the, the galley of your book, you know, a lot of times you'd think with a book about wine and vineyards and, and all that thing, that it would be big, big, like a coffee table right, book. Right. You know, because the, the pictures are lush and the yes. voluptuous grapes and all of that. But really, I, I like that because it's, it almost seems like a, I mean, to say it like this, like a little prayer book, you know? I mean, you mm -hmm. can take it with you. You can read it under a tree, yeah. you know? It, it's kind of mm -hmm. contemplative. And that's and, what the Soul of the World book exactly right. was. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it's been been really fun to get that. I like that. Yeah, and it was fun to have some of my photos in there too. That was really, I just love vineyards. And I just think they're so I, beautiful. I love the photos that you do of vineyards. I mean, I think you're a really good photographer. Oh, yeah. Thank you. And, and, and that's, you couldn't have a book like that without the pictures. Uh -huh. Hopefully we'll be seeing them pretty soon. I think they're going to run them. Yeah. I keep peeking over there thinking. <laughs> peeking, yeah. peeking. Well, yeah, and it was, it's really been fun because I've been able to there spend. There you go. There, oh, yeah. There's one. That's a cl cluster of Pinot Noir at uh, Corte Terre Vineyards. Beautiful. And I, I keep trying to look for the most perfect grape <laughs> cluster I can find. You know, I have billions of them on my drive. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, but I just love that one. I love the way that the, the vine kind of curved around the corner on it. Uh-huh. And the way the light was hitting it. It's perfect. And that's the rock that gives Corte Terre its name. Corte Terre means heart of earth. And, and it's really beautiful because the fog oftentimes in the fall will come and fill the valley. And you can see that the grapevines have already turned color in the mm -hmm. background. Uh -huh. Just beautiful. But this huge rock. That's May Sarah. Oh, have you seen their new facility? You know, I love that place. Oh, it, it's such a beautiful venue, but just where it's set. Oh, yeah. That, that doorway is... 30 feet high and about 60 mm -hmm. feet across. I mean, that is a big building. And it's <laughs> such a beautiful setting. I just love that. Yeah. I think, and that's, uh, I just love the way that, that uh, that's a cluster of vignette. And uh, I just love the way it was lit. And mm -hmm. to me, it almost looks like the grapes are alive. You yeah, know, they like are. They're, they're little embryos or something. I yeah. yeah. Love really pretty. that. So. Well, I know you have a lot of photos. And you probably could have brought 100 at least. <laughs> if not 200, <laughs> if not 400. But that's a slideshow for just, another day. Just yeah. give you know, a taste of it. Kind yeah. of like back so in the speak. '60s when my dad's friend would say, "Lyle, not the vacation slides." Yeah. No, oh God, no, don't go know? there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so you're just uh, sort of inches away from. Very close. We're looking at the final uh, print of it, and then we're going to make our final corrections, and then have a bunch run off. So we're we're just right up against okay. it. Okay. Probably end of uh, end of September when we're actually doing our release party. Then are you are you planning? Uh, do you have a, a place? Are you going to do it at the church? Oh no. Oh. Because <laughs> we, we want to serve wine. So, oh okay. Oh, that's uh, right. Of yeah, course. They won't yeah. Let us do that in our yeah. church. So <laughs> we could go to the Catholic church and do it there. Yeah, I was going to say you're going to have to rewrite the rules of that yeah. church. <laughs> yeah. So I think we're going to do it at a winery. And oh, that'll be perfect. We're still making those arrangements. Okay, so, yeah. that would yeah. be wonderful. Yeah. Okay. And it's it's uh, the proceeds are going to this new program we have called Ch Chaplain's Pantry, which is going to be a jobs training program. Right. So it'll be catered, of course. Yeah. You know, you yeah. could you could spend uh, thirty seconds to talk about Chaplain's Pantry because I think it's a really wonderful program. Well, it's it's really exciting to me. Uh, we have so many people come through our congregation that are hurting and looking for help, and, and mm -hmm. I always feel like it's a band aid we give them. You know, we pay their power bill and just kind of keep them going, but. I long to give them some skills that will actually help them find work. And so this is, we're just at the beginning stage of starting this program of uh, doing job training and teaching people how to get a job in a restaurant. And the first section of that is to start up a company called Chapman's Pantry, which does catering, and, uh, and to start to generate some revenue so that we can support the program. And the food is fabulous, by the way. So we there's a plug Pete's for that. Food, yeah. And so, so you are just this close to your own publication. Yes. And you're kind of just knee-deep. <laughs> well, actually, uh, 
Yeah, uh, the, we just had the official release of the book, mm -hmm. and so there was a lot of uh, uh, preliminary activity. I actually had uh, my launch party at the church, if you would have told me before, but uh, we would have had wine. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was, it was wonderful, and Chaplain's Pantry did that, which was fabulous. Uh, but yeah, the, the book is out. Uh, there are reviews on uh, uh, various sites, and just it's just been a ball. I just love it. Well, hopefully this is the part that's where it's actually starting to feel fun, you know. It's all felt fun. Mm -hmm. It was scary. This is, this is Steve delighted. Mm -hmm. this, this is him. This is him. He's ex <laughs> extremely excited I'm, I'm and excited. really happy yeah. mm -hmm. about his book. Yeah, he's just yeah. having the best time of his life. Yeah. Good. That's wonderful. This is what he looks like. I he's, internalized he's, this. He's doing cartwheels inside. <laughs> and are you writing something else? Uh, I have written a sequel to this book, mm -hmm. and uh, depending, and, and it, uh, part of this is financial, but uh, I hope early next year that, to have the second one available. Okay, good. So a minor character from this book will be the protagonist of the second book. Okay, Which one is it? Owen. Oh, I love Owen. I do too. <laughs> oh. yeah. Obviously you do too. Yeah. Owen spoke to you, and he's still speaking, right? <laughs> you know, he's, there he's a rascal. There aren't a lot of novels about handymen. You know, guys yeah. that use tools. And there should be more, I think. Well, well you know, you know really, well, they're the, the, the backbone of the world, aren't oh, they? Sure. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's like when your car breaks down or your washing machine breaks down, you don't want an accountant. You want that plumber. <laughs> you want that car mechanic. I mean, yeah. they're the, your hero, knight in shining armor. I was right. talking to a plumber once, and he said, he said, my profession is responsible for making more people healthy than any other. Absolutely. Because yeah. right? awesome. if you have clean water, whoo. Yeah, yeah, it makes dude. a big difference. Yeah. Sure. So what's been the most surprising thing, Mark, for you about, about the writing process? Just how complicated. Well, I mean, the most surprising thing to me was how bad a writer I was. Oh, okay. Because I, I just didn't realize how much I needed an editor, and I really lucked out to find a couple that uh, we've spent hundreds of hours going through this little <laughs> tiny book and just mm -hmm. making correction after correction. Mm -hmm. uh, and so just how difficult. And, and then I had to let go of some chapters that I was really, it's like you know watching your children die. It's just mm -hmm. really hard. And so that's been... Uh, very surprising, and then just how complicated it is to go from this. I have this idea. Let's mm -hmm. put out. How a tough book, can it be? <laughs> to having this little tiny book that you right. want to get out there. Mm -hmm. It's just it's yeah. it's a lot like childbirth. I think you know. It just is. It's much more enveloping than you yeah. imagine it could be. Yeah. Do you think? Do you see yourself writing some more? I have like four or five books in the can that I've written. Okay, now you're now it's just once you you yeah. open the floodgates, they're just coming out. Oh well, yeah, and they they have for a while. But I have another one that I'm really that I was working on on my sabbatical called Lessons from the Vineyard. And it's lessons that I think that people in churches could learn by studying vineyards. So okay. that'll be my next one, I think. Oh, I like it. That's, That's a great. sequel. Yeah. yeah. That's a good sequel. OK, so well, we're, we're just about down to the end here. So why don't we go through the, the days and time one more time of your sure. event. So October 10th, mm -hmm. uh, 7 to 9, at uh, Linfield's uh, Nicholson Library. And there'll be six authors. And the idea is to <coughs> share with the audience um, if they're interested, mm -hmm. how might you reach out to an audience? Who is that audience? Identifying the mm -hmm. audience. And just a question and answer. We're just going to have a lot of fun. So everybody will you'll kind of talk a little bit and then open it up for questions and Excellent. that whole thing. Sure. Wonderful. Sure. So maybe a nice mix of students and more seasoned people from the community. More and I like that. That would be our <laughs> friends. Yes. Yeah, that would be the rest of us. Well, thank you, gentlemen, very right. much for being here today. I really appreciate it. This has been wonderful, oh, and great. Um, I'll look forward to seeing the other four, too, as well. You bet. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. All right.